Hello, welcome to the Ale and Audio podcast, uh, the chat shit shed section of the show with myself, Jimbo, and very shortly I'll bring in our resident sheddies. Uh, hello, if you are listening to this on either Spotify, Apple, Amazon, Google, anywhere like that, if you want to hear it all with the music, the full music tracks and all that kind of thing, uh, proper Friday feel songs, uh, then tune in. And you also people choose their own, the, the songs on the show as well, not just us, the listeners choose it. Uh, please find that on Mixcloud for the full show. And uh, yeah, hello if you are watching, listening to this sorry, live on Ale and Radio as well. If you got up early, 8 o'clock, tuned in on your way to work, at work, whatever. Hello if uh, that's you. Thanks for joining us. And finally, hello if you're watching this anywhere in video form, such as YouTube or whatever. There we go. Um, so... Let's bring in our resident sheddies. It's Andy of the Dunningstoke, Dave of the Hardy Arms in Leicester. How are we doing? Both good? Super Fantastic. duper. Excellent. Well, let's let's start off with some breaking news as of uh, Monday night. Well, I think, I think it's the first I've heard of it. So Monday at time recording. Andy, what's happening down at Stoke? Stoke City. Sat the manager, sat the manager <laughs> this morning. Everybody went, what? Why? <laughs> Who knows? Could I don't know. Could be... I, don't know if, I don't know if Ancelotti's come free from Real Madrid or something. Uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe that's the pull. I'm, I'm predicting the tomorrow. Bernabeu, to the Bernabeu to the Bet365, I think it's a good switch. Yeah, why not? It's a challenge, isn't it? Let's put yeah. that on your record if you get Stoke out of a ditch, you know. Uh, but I'm thinking, right, what are, like, are the headlines on Tuesday uh, as the papers come out? Obviously, people listen to this on Friday. Could they well be Schumacher wins the managerial sack race? You know, Schumacher know. racing. Probably Maybe. not. Probably a bit of a stretch, but... Maybe. Maybe they're just thinking of sacking Wayne Rooney at Plymouth. Uh, so they probably want they probably want the manager back, but yeah. you don't blame them. So. Yeah. Well, any have you got any uh, anyone on the list you'd like to see? No, because I don't think there's anybody <laughs> available, is it? So this will be. Uh, I think it's going to be a surprise one. Do you know, like when uh, Dave, your last manager that left you, went to Chelsea? Um, what was his name? Siesta. Whatever his name. Uh, was. You forgot to remember his name because he's only there 12 months. He was weren't like, long, he weren't around long enough to know his name. Maresca. Correct. That's it. Siesta. That's it. That's who I said. Um, <laughs> um, there'll be somebody like that, an unknown quantity, and it'll probably backfire. So let's see. What, I don't know. What, we've, got, it, we've got the Carabao Cup with the um, the amazing Ryan Shawcross taking over as temporary interim charge tomorrow night. So whether we'll have somebody in place for all at home on Friday. Mm. I don't think so. I think it's always worth a fiver on caretaker in these situations because also if they get to 10 games as caretaker, you take home the money. Cool. I think it's worth a little bet. I might even do that bet myself. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, so they, <laughs> there you go. thing is, when, when, when a club sacks managers so easily and because he probably didn't deserve the sack, did he really? It weren't going amazingly, but it weren't going bad either, was it? Um, no. You know? It, when when they do that, then the managers probably don't want to go to clubs either, do they? They kind of look less appealing when they're just going to get sacked for nothing. So that's the trouble. Yeah. Wednesday have had all that before, but anyway. Um, yeah, so well, just getting on side with him as well. So mm. I don't know. interesting one. Okay, so well, that was the breaking news anyway. Um, but other than that, uh, did you have a good weekend, Andy? Yeah, it was good. Thanks. Uh, went out Friday night with you know work due. You know, surprised enforced fun um but it actually turned out okay there's a place called point, point i want to call it point blank uh it's one of these like you know like flight club where you go mm -hmm. and play darts or you can play cricket or well, point blank is basically the same with guns so it's like a big screen with different skill challenges and you sort of calibrate pistols uh one guy broke one of the pistols on ours so we actually got a free upgrade to a ak-47 which i can i can tell you is quite heavy um for a laser gun um, but yeah, it was a good fun on Friday night in Manchester. So went out for it, went to a pub I'd not been to before. Um, got chatting with the landlord, as you do. Um, it's a newish pub that's open, probably about six months or something. Um, new West, I want to say New West Woodhouse, but I can always get the name wrong. 
Um, but Panoma Island took over it, um, and they are mainly their beers on tap. But they've got three. I don't know if you meant when I mentioned about Farm Trip last week, Celestial Beer Company from America. Uh, I looked across the bar, and they've got three of their beers on tap. And so I was like, I'll have one of them. Thank you very much. He goes, you know exactly what you want. So, said, <laughs> um, uh, so he, gave, he gave me a taste of the tip at 10%, because first at half past five on a Friday afternoon after work is not a good place to start with a tipper, is it? Uh, so he, I had half of a dipper instead um, at 8%. And when I walk around to everybody else, everybody else has got the, the usual stuff. There's one guy who's got a few like sours going on that says, oh, interesting. Um and they said, everybody said, what's that soup you've ordered? <laughs> so um, <laughs> if you can see the recording and the name, our names are in big, like, uh, sort of beige boxes, aren't they, on these, on the stream yard. That's, that was the, invert the white and the cream, that was the colour of the beer. It was, <laughs> it's the most surreal thing you've ever seen. It did look like some sort of chicken broth, um, but it was delicious. <laughs> but yeah, that was Very me. Good. And then um, just chilled, because obviously then the rain came in on Sunday, so. So you said that was that was that was kind of just a steady a steady weekend really for you. So is man, I always find that is Manchester not that not that far for you to get from got, to. We have in Manchester, so half our teams in Manchester. So I went work in Manchester for the day, ah, um, okay. and then I stayed in a, a travel lodge on Piccadilly for a night. So very wow. good. Night to your sen. How good. It's good. Um, So we'll we'll get to we'll get on the beer as quick as we can. But Dave, without telling us too much about what you did at the weekend, because you're going to do that for Wish You a Beer. Did you have a good weekend? And when we started, when we when we when we turned on the cameras, you said you were struggling a little bit, Dave. Yeah, um, I had a very heavy session on Saturday, Um, but no, it was a good weekend. Friday I went Pinots, and they had Stupid on tap, so I had a cheeky little. Were you pouring again? (laughs) <laughs> were you pouring again stupid no, it, wasn't, the it, wasn't, it wasn't the stupid that was pouring the beer it was uh yeah so vault city stupid on tap so obviously i had to go nice. there and have a bit of that and then uh yeah saturday we'll talk about it and then sunday just doing jobs around the house so yeah well it does I was, I was you'll hear nervous. You'll hear about it soon, but it sounded like Dave, after his stupid at Pinsons on the Saturday, he proceeded to be stupid, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> we'll find out more about that in a second. But you've sent us a beer, haven't you, Dave? Well, I've sent you it, but it's kind of come actually from my brother. So my brother had a holiday in uh, Canada a couple of weeks ago. And I said to him, pick me back up three beers Um and I'll send them to you lot. So I've just texted him saying tonight's the Canadian night. But yeah, so these I've actually travelled on the big plane in the sky all the way back from Canada in my brother's suitcase. Oh, so, Very yeah. good. Uh, it's called like Tef- it. Tofino Brewing Company. And it's spaced hazy IPA, a 5.5% beer. So... Nice. See, um, I don't I know. If... On, his, on the brewery address, it says industrial weights. I'm glad to hear that most breweries are on industrial parks around the world. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not in somebody's back garden. Yeah. Um, yeah so... I don't. I don't think I've ever had it from from memory. I don't think I've ever had a beer from Canada before. No, I'm not hundred percent a... sure. Oh, it's, but... got, it's got a, it's got a story on the side of it, Dave. Go on, then read it out. I can barely read it because it's quite dark in here. Time for Jack and Ori. Dave can read it. <laughs> I'm cracking it open anyway. Let, yeah, let's have a crack it open. Basically, it, it's a story about the beer, um, and I can't be bothered to read it. Oh, it says, what is it? Right. Mired in a galaxy, galactic space mystery and confounded scientific uncertainty, the exact origins of this hazy IPA are a theoretical and unknown as the universe in which we float. What a load of shit. Wow. Deep. It's deep. Basically, tropical flavours, previously hidden with the earthbound ingredients, unbound... I can't even see that word because of the background. Thermos. Created an expansion of flavour of endlessness of outer space. There you go. Well, basically, it's supposed to be good. Either way... You were hung over and you managed to read it. You've done well there. It, um, it, it, I don't know if yours is the same, but mine's not Not that it's a bad thing, and I'm sure it's going to taste very nice, but the head went quite quickly on mine. 
Yeah, he did, yeah. Yeah, it's very carbonated and quite... It's travelled a long way. Some beers do mm. not travel, do they? No. It's nice, though. It's very... Um... It's not overly hazy either, is it? I'm, I'm getting a bit oh. orange peel a little bit. Orange, orange, get orange. Juicy bits in the bottom, that's mm. what I'm hoping Do we for. think I'm missing, do you think I've got the, not got the juicy bits down? No, I think there's some left in my can, so I'm, got, I'm hoping there's some juicy bits in it. I always chuck them up floor because it kind of comes out in a different, it like it always, it seems to come out in an unport, like it doesn't come out naturally, it seems to spring out, doesn't it, the juicy bits, and it, it just misses my glass entirely most of the time, yeah. and end up on so the side. Yeah, the thimble. <laughs> Jimbo, you made a bit of a mistake with this beer, didn't you? I did. You travelled all the way to Leicestershire. In yeah. one, got there successfully, the yeah. I, ha I handed you the beer, personally, says <laughs> here. are. Take that home with you. And then what did you do the next day? I, I was worried I'd left it in Pinot's, but I or the taxi. Um, so I was quite relieved when it was at yours. So you texted me and went, I've left the beer. So then I ended up having to post them out to you anyway, so... Luckily, this one's have not cost me ten pounds to post it, like and his tenants did. <laughs> this is probably cheaper coming all the way from Canada than posting that tenants. Probably, it's yeah. It's good though. It's Thank you to your brother, uh, Rose Cottage. Isn't it? He's, he's on Instagram. He do, he don't, I know he didn't use it that much, but uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. Um, it's fruitier than what you probably expect. Of, mm. I mean, it's got a bit of cloudiness to it. It's not overly thick of it, like dark. But no, quite uh, on so I am yeah I am I am told that Canada's craft beer because Jay's been now twice. Did he go last year as well or was it the year before? But he said from the last time he went that the craft beer scene's just gone mad out there. So it seems that every year he's gone, it's got better. So which is of good. Course, said, of course we we do have listeners out there as well. Uh Frank yeah. uh, Jesse, Frank's Jailhouse pub shed. He did um we did have a bit of when he the weekend he did come back. He brought me another three bit, three or four beers, which he also brought back for himself. And we sat there drinking them. And I've got to admit, they are some fantastic beers. Um, that brought same back, brewery so. or different brewery or all different breweries. So there was four different beers and four different breweries. So oh cool. And oh, wow. I don't know if anybody, anybody knows this, or obviously the people that live in Canada know this. But if you go to a supermarket like your big like your big Tesco, your Asda, Sainsbury's, you cannot buy alcohol there. You have to go to a liquor store. Oh, so it's like they're protecting, kind of like the independence a little bit, aren't they? In a sense, I, I imagine. Yeah, unless, so like, it, unless they're just big, big supermarket style it's alcohol laws. Is it? Is yeah. it like a, the European country as well does it. As I'm not sure if it's. Is it Finland, Norway, or so? Oh, I can't remember. There's what I'm sure there's another like country where you can't buy alcohol from a supermarket. You have to go to a actual like a liquor store, beer merchant. Like there's a specific yeah. shop where you buy. You can basically buy your alcohol, your wine, beer, whatever spirits, everything. He, he did say when you go into the uh, obviously you go to the liquor shop, shop or the beer merchant. He's like it, it's just like being a kid in a candy shop because <laughs> it's just wall to wall beers and. He said you go to some of the shops as well and they've like got a back room which is all behind doors and it's just all beers on and then you go in there and it's all refrigerated. So it's quite like cold and stuff when you buy it. And well, I did, well, I like from, I think it's kind of do it as well, but in America especially do it when they do like those in the fridge with just like the six pack with like a cardboard sleeve with yeah. the handle on. Like, literally it's just, I'll have six of them. I like that. <laughs> so yeah, Brilliant. there you go. Flew this along with this as well as it's nice. This it's nice. It's like a, it's, a, it's like pithy orange, orange mm. squishy. It's a little no. it's a, um, for, quite thin. It, like it's a little bit chewy at the end. If you know what I mean, it's like leaves a flavour behind, doesn't it? It's not a yeah. off-putting flavour. It's just the main flavour of the beer, but it kind of lingers around a bit. Yeah, I like it. I could drink quite a few of these. They're all right. Oh, yeah. What percentage are we talking? Yeah, like, you know? some, beers, yeah. some beers just don't travel. Like this could have mm. just been affected by being. In an aeroplane, mm. you know what I mean. So there we go. We got kicked around the aeroplane by the stewards and all that. Like yeah. we always. Did. Which which airport did he fly from in England? Uh, <laughs> I want to potentially say Gatwick. Gatwick, oh the worst! I could have said that better. Yeah, I thought. 
Yeah, I can't remember. <laughs> one of them. One of them that's got airy planes. Airy planes. Where the people boot your foot play football with your suitcases. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking if anybody of... out there that works in the airport, let us know how many goals <laughs> did you score. Um... <laughs> Speaking of travel, though, it's time for this. Wish you would be a. And this time. Brought to you by Dave of the Hardy Arms, who, yeah, well, you kind of mentioned it already, but uh, you got yourself in a bit of a tangle, aren't you, Dave? I did get myself into a bit of a tangle on Saturday night, you're right. <laughs> tell us all about it and tell us where you went the other, and, and, re- and would you recommend it to others? Oh, yeah, definitely. Getting into a bit of a tangle <laughs> on a Saturday night. Uh, so I, with some, basically, a friend of mine uh, at work lives over in Melton Mowbray Way. So we arranged for the lads at work to go over to his house, stop there and do a few couple of little pub visits and stuff here and there. So I thought on my way, I will go to Round Corner Brewery Tap Room because it's kind of on the way to where I was going. Um, so, yeah, I swung by, didn't know where to park, uh, but then realised after I'd paid two and a half quid parking that there's a free car park literally at the tap room. So... I'm always already two and a half quid down. Uh, but it's quite really like funky. So if I don't know if you've, anybody's ever been to Melton or is from the area, obviously there's a big cattle market in the middle of Melton. It's very famous for selling sheep and chickens and all, you know, everything like that. A lot of farmers area. Pot so pies. The, pot pies. Uh, on Saturday, the farmer's market was on. So there was sheep and cows and chickens everywhere being sold. Pot pies. Pot, <laughs> pot pie. <laughs> <laughs> so I was walking through the market and there it was. So it's literally within the middle of the market is the brewery. Um, so you walk in, nice little tap room, quite a, I wouldn't say if you, obviously it's the biggest, I'd say Dunny is probably just a little bit bigger than Trenton Gardens, like the tap room is, but you can see all the workings of the brewery. So it's kind of got, it's not closed off. So you can see all the tanks and everything all behind you at the side. Um, and obviously they've got all their beers on, stouts. They had a sour on, which I didn't get actually try. Black currant sour. I should have tried some of that, to be fair. Um, pale ales and stuff like that. So nice little thing. And they also had some like little live country music going on. So there was a couple of guys playing guitar. And so I thought it was quite cool. And they've got a little seating area outside as well. So there was a lot of farmers coming and going from having a few beers whilst selling some sheep. Pork pies. But, um, and, and put well, no, no <laughs> pot pies there, but you can go to the old, the, the okay. old is it Dickens and Morris, as I think it's called, um, is the famous pot pie shop over in Melton. But then I went on to a village out just out of Melton called Frisbee, and there's a lovely little pub there called the Bell, <laughs> right next door to Boomerang. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dave just can't stop going back. <laughs> no, I will go back here though, actually. Yeah, really yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we went to Frisbee and uh, yeah, to the bell, which I then seen on Instagram on Sunday night that they're getting hawks and lager on tap as well, which uh-huh. is not a bad lager. So I thought, you know, that's mm-hmm. worth a trip back. Uh, they did have like a they had four cask beers, which are like a guest, and they're all guests, so they change all the time depending on what's in and stuff so that's quite a good one to go to uh then where else did i go we went to the blue bell inn in hobie obviously about a 10 minute taxi ride from frisbee um that's an everard's pub so obviously a lot of uh, everard's beer on there which i did have titanic stout prior to that and then that's where i then stole or oh, sorry not stole <laughs> i borrowed borrowed of course yep Long term loan, Titanic glass. Very good. So that was the trophy for the night. Which then, obviously, stealing a glass early doors means you've then got to carry that glass around with you for the rest of the night. Luckily, my friend had a coat. yeah. Luckily, somebody else looked after it for me. Uh, where did we go after that? And then we went to where my friend lives in Astfordby, which is 
shortest taxi ride from there. Went to the pub called The Crown. Um, and they have... I mean, they had Atlantic Pale Ale on tap. That's all I'm saying. You know, there was worse things like Carlin. Yeah. So... You had a couple of them. <laughs> In his well, bar club. I Stole need to... I, I have a confession to make. Oh, we have got the wrong. No, no, no second. Monks, Let me, where are these northern monks? Here we go. Timbo, forgive me. I have sinned. <laughs> I made a bet with my friend that if he was going to try a triple fruited mango sour after ripping me for drinking sours, I would drink a pint of Carlin. Oh. <laughs> So whilst upon this pub in the Crown in Ashford Bay, I had to take that bet and honour it, and I had a pint of Carlin. Oh, no. Fortunately, there is no physical evidence. But the dirty dish water passed to my lips. <laughs> and, it was me. and I have never sunk a pint quicker than that. And I lined another part up straight after it to wash it down. <laughs> you, you know, he came on with this, like... You, you know, he came on with this parent hangover. It's not a hangover. It's shame. It's, it's, it's shame. full under the threat of shame. Shame. Shame, <laughs> shame on you. Shame. 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 shame on you. <laughs> but, good job this is in medieval times. You'd have me walking down the street naked. Stone in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I have been ripped to the high heavens from this lad for drinking sourdough beer, as he calls it. Uh, so I gave him a can of triple fruited mango, and guess what? Yeah, he liked it. Hey. <laughs> he loved it. So yeah, so I had to honour that bet, and I said, "Yeah, you know what? Fair play. You drank it. You enjoyed it. I oh, will honour that bet." Uh, but then after that, it all went downhill. What he's not telling you is he's, he's also managed to take a... You know, he gets addicted to stuff, doesn't he, Dave? He's, he's also... Yeah, now, right, like, he, he stole a, gla- a, glass, a, a glass of Carlin as well. Carlin he's, glass got a litre gla- he's got a litre jug for Carlin. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it went, it went all downhill pretty much after that. Because what I didn't realise was I was drinking double rum and cokes when I just thought it was a single. And then somebody had a double gin and tonic, didn't want it. One of the lads didn't want it. So I chinned that, thinking <laughs> I don't want to waste it. And then they were supplying me with them little baby Guinness shots. And then we went back to his house. And I thought I'd take a selection of beers. And forgetting all what beers I'd actually brought with me, all of them were 8%. So I ended up <laughs> drinking two 8% beers. Plus my other friend who I went to Edinburgh with, Chris, he brought... Vault City Stupid, two of them, and we chin them as well. <laughs> so, needless to say, I felt rough as arseholes yesterday, and I still feel rough now. Is this, is this, are you, do you think it's the longest hangover you've had then? Yeah. But I, like, I wasn't that bad. I just had a really bad headache yesterday. We're like pounding. I think that's the chemicals in the, in the car. I, I do it. think. I do think I you get to an age. You get to yeah. an age, you do, and it just doesn't go. It, it just it gets longer. I'm takes kind of week. takes me weeks. Look now, how Dave. quick I normally drink a beer. Look how slow I'm currently <laughs> drinking this. <laughs> well, there we go. If it wasn't the fact that you said Canadian night, I'd have just had a bottle of Coke or something. Like <laughs> well, there you go. That was wish you a beer. That was a fun one. Yes, oh, bye. <laughs> oh, bye. Shame on you. Time for the big pub shed pub quiz with your host Jimbo, your contestants Andy of the Dunning in Stoke, Dave of the Hardy Arms in Leicester. Some weeks it's really hard to get questions. Other weeks I can't. I, there's too many. And this like week, coming out of your bloody armpits. Huh? Yeah, it, it was tough this what? week. What Dave's favourite new beer? New favourite <laughs> beer? Hey, not Carlin. Carlin. 
B, Charlie Nitro, or C, Pig's Piss from the market <laughs> at Malton Mowbray. Question one. I've re- that's pretty much what it is, isn't it? They've just got Melton Market, and in the drains, they've basically just got... There you go. <laughs> Pig's well. <laughs> Question one. Dave said there was no evidence of what happened at the weekend, but who sent Jimbo a picture? <laughs> I do wish that I'd got a picture with me and this part of Carlin in my hand, but honestly, I drank it that quick. I don't think you really There'll be loads more opportunities for that. I bet he really, he's not telling us, but I bet he really went, oh, it's better than I remember it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, well, I that... mean, uh... <laughs> well, that fizzled. I don't think I can really remember the taste of it, but yeah, I, I remember, remember just having that and an Atlantic pen, and I just chinned this Carlin, and then I was like, "Quick, wash it down, wash it down." I bet you don't. I bet you don't remember what those eight percent cans tasted like at the end, either, or and if you even enjoyed them. Well, one of them was Salt Tram, which is quite a nice beer, and the other one was the Shiny Dipper from the Tap Takeover. Oh yeah, yeah quite nice. And then Bolt City mm. Stupid. That's just curdles. You know what I mean, at the end, having that is your last drink. Oh, curdling. When you've had Baby Guinness, which is Tia Maria and Bailey's anyway. Yeah, when I was at this point point blank thing on on Friday, we were, like it must be a work thing because we were sitting there. They give you tokens, so we got two tokens for a free part. They got Brixton Pale, which is not too bad. I said, somebody said to me, "Oh, you you buying something that's not craft beer?" Says, "No, but if they look after the beer, okay." Usually, there's a decent pint to be had out there. Like, you you draw the line at Carling. Nobody drinks that. Other than me. <laughs> I don't. But I'm just saying, like, usually you see, like, Brixton, even yeah. Neck Oil. We always argue about Neck Oil and stuff like that. But it's like, if you look after the beer, well, the pub, it usually tastes okay. Mm. Yeah. So I had a couple of pints of Brixton. That was decent. Sat down. We got a tap on the shoulder, turn around, and it's like, yeah, he's a baby Guinness for you. I was like, for fuck's sake. Why do we, why do, we do it? I, I said to the, the girl, uh, she, I said to her, I said, why did you do that? She says, I don't even know why I bought them. I just bought, <laughs> I just bought 15 baby Guinnesses. I says, yeah. have you got some sort of affliction or Tourette's or something? Like, do we just keep you away? Well, come or get come some tape across your mouth? Yeah. <laughs> Like Dave, yeah. when he goes in, you go, Dave, just get thirds. He goes, Yeah, okay. Uh, two pints, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I experienced that in on Abbeydale Road in yeah. Sheffield when we went for the when we went for that first people, one. People don't believe me. People don't really yeah. want to say that. Dave just goes a third. He go up, he go, I'll have two pints. <laughs> Dave, it's maybe it's eight percent. I've all the bought pints now. <laughs> Even when Dave's not there, he's blaming Dave. Yeah. <laughs> Give me this pint. I didn't even want this. Must have been fucking Dave. Where's Dave? <laughs> you know what the worst thing is as well, and I don't know if this, if this is to me, if it's expensive or not, because I can't, don't really drink rum anymore, and I don't really buy it. For four double rum and cokes, forty pounds. Ooh, Ooh in a village pub. That's bad. that's that's pretty expensive. That because I went, we were at the Oast House, which is the like German style cabin thing that's got a bit of an outdoor stage in Manchester. It's pretty cool, to be fair. They have Budvar lager on, so I was yeah. just drinking that. I bought two pints of Budvar, I bought a single gin and tonic, a double rum and lemonade, and a, and a double gin and lemonade. And a bottle of Record League cider. Yeah, that was the round. And that was 42 quid. So that well, wasn't well, too bad. Yeah, that's not bad at all, yeah. No, mm. for, the middle of, for the middle of the city centre as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, Half past ten at night. I thought that was pretty decent. We were in the arse end of nowhere in the back hole, black hole of cow cutter. Black hole of cow <laughs> cutter. <laughs> cost. You were in cost cutter. You were going to go there and food next door, Dave. Seventy nine p. Right here we go. Here's your first question. Buzzers at the ready. You need your buzzers. Yeah. Where's my buzzer gone? Right, here we go. So first to buzz in with this one. Name a Scottish craft brewery that will have beers available to purchase in Aldi's winter beer range. And I think we're talking Scotland Aldi's here. So name one of the... Is that well, Andy first? Yeah. Stuart Brewing. Stuart Brewing. 
Correct. Can you give me another, Dave? Um, Cold Dave. Town Brewer. Cold Town is wrong. Oh. I mean, Do you want to name a Rick, couple more or shall I reveal Williams them? Williams Brothers? Williams Brothers were already maybe in. Yeah, so I, don't, right. I don't know if they're maybe in the new set or if they're just staying. Oh. But here, here they are. Nah, not Brewdog, because they, they take yeah, off Brewdog. Yeah, interesting. I nearly went, I went, walked around the northern quarter of Manchester on Saturday mm. afternoon before I went meet Sam. And I actually discovered where the fierce beer bar is in Manchester. I've never oh, been right, in Oh, right, okay. Um, but yeah, it's supposed cool. to be very good. Their, yeah. their, um, their logo, the, the like the evil hop, yeah. is like, pretty, it's a pretty cool design. It is, yeah, yeah. So we've got fierce beer, Stuart Brewing, as Andy said, Loch Lomond. A lot Lomond. Uh, and in the Innocent Gun, I don't know if we... Are they, would you say they're craft brewery? They're kind of more like a traditional one. I don't know. Maybe they are. I think they're maybe. getting into craft again, aren't they? They're trying to yeah. get into craft To be fair, yeah. they do, they're... Um, they, do they make it still? They used to make like a... It sounds weird, but it's like a really strong IPA that they used to make. I don't know if they make it anymore. But they used to be like... You knew you'd had it. If you'd had a couple of them, you were like, you remember the good old days of Caffrey's where it used to blow your head off? <laughs> like, Innocent Gun's first sort of IPA was that, like, personified. It was just like, Jesus Christ, this is... You, you, once you'd had a couple, you were like, <laughs> you could feel the headache coming, if you know what I mean. So I don't know if they, do, don't know if they still do it anymore. Remember Carlsberg Special Brew? Yeah, that's... That really? no, I'm not saying it's in that category. That going, I'm saying it's, in that, it's in the category of, like, yeah. stuff that's, like, it's so potent, it's just like it, it affects you straight away. Even though sometimes <laughs> the percentage is quite low, I don't know what it is in it, it just itches. Yeah, you know, yeah. So, chemical. Um, so yeah, there yeah. you go. Just just a reminder of those ones, the Scottish ones that you'll get. Well, the Scottish be- breweries that you'll find in, in Aldi, I think this is probably going to be the Scottish Aldis, though. Uh, Fierce Beer, Stuart Bruin, Loch Lomond, and Innocent Gun. No, you'd be, you'd, yeah. I think you might be surprised if you, if Aldi usually put it in their winter beer. That means it usually makes like their um, yeah magazine Special thing bar. that they put stuff out. So it'll filter down I, to a few Aldi. It won't be in all Aldis, but it'll filter. Yeah, I'd, I'd not you see they they obviously released the winter range, but I'd not I'd seen reports of the Scottish one, but not nothing to do with like England, Wales, or anything else. So I have to look out for that. Maybe there's a clutch of English ones heading this way as well. Because obviously, and on that, I think they, they announced that, I think it was like a biomedical student or something had got the uh, job as the chief taster. You know, they were advertising for it. They did a competition for a taster. Me and me and Dave had that time when we did Little versus all the old, a few years ago, that one that tasted like <laughs> fucking bath salts. <laughs> <laughs> right, next question. Multiple choice. Ooh, hell. Struggling Folly Wildlife Rescue Charity near Tunbridge Wells may be saved by which of these musicians' beer? Um, old Stinkhorn Organic Ale, which is going to be auctioned to raise money for the charity. So one of these musicians donated uh, some beer years ago to somebody attached to this particular charity, and now they are going to try and auction that to save this charity. So it's either... Sir Paul McCartney, Bob Dylan, or Dusty Springfield, and the beer is called Old Stinkhorn Organic Ale. If you fancy any of that, I'd, I'd have a go. Um, <laughs> Dusty Springfield, that's a that's a shot from nowhere, really, isn't it? I know. I mean, Sir Paul McCartney's still alive, isn't he? So I'm thinking he doesn't really drink. So you may have given up beer. Like passed it on to a charity. I mean, he is like three hundred years old, isn't he? Phil McCartney. Yeah, yeah. I'm not quite sure. He's... Nobody's seen think... him for a while. Nobody see. I, I, I don't. Nobody seen him for a while. We could. We don't know. Anything could have happened to him. I saw a picture of Clint Eastwood the other day. He's ninety six. Is he ninety eight? Ninety six. Yeah. Ninety eight. Clint Eastwood. Jesus Christ, poor bloke. Um. <coughs> It's a tough one. I don't know, Dave. What do you think? Still got Bob Dylan, Dusty Springfield. Of course, uh, you said I'll... you said you said Sir Paul McCartney's still alive. Uh, obviously, Dusty isn't, but just to confirm, Bob Dylan is still alive as well. No, I know, but I'm just saying, Paul, <laughs> Sir Paul McCartney's like he, he's three thousand yeah. years old, isn't he? I mean, yeah. yeah. I was gonna, I was going to go straight to Bob Dylan for some reason. I don't know why. Charity. 
He doesn't like mobiles at his gig, does he? Bob Dylan. No. no. He likes a bit of charity, doesn't he? Mm. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go left field. I'm gonna go Dusty Springfield. Just Dusty Springfield. I bet, I bet she did suffer a bit. I'll go Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan. Anybody got the right answer? No, oh, no marks there. Three thousand year old Paul McCartney. It was Paul McCartney, yeah. So apparently he one of the trust patron's late husband was a guitarist and was once gifted a case of this old stinkhorn organic ale by Paul McCartney, who uh, Sir Paul McCartney, who had a farm close to where this brewery produced this beer. And Paul McCartney apparently made a regular habit of gifting this beer to friends. So there you go. So that beer might oh, yeah. actually save a charity. Um, it's going to auction That's soon. Cool. Yeah. Beer doing, beer doing good once again. All right, Dave. No, I've got to touch my I'm knackered today. I'm knackered. He's, he's got stupid he's, coming out of his nose. All, <laughs> all, he looks all washed up, doesn't he? He's like, he's. he's well, look well. Is any, Dave, have you got a GoFundMe page? I think I need to send you like 20p or something just to like get you home. Look over there. Should we do one of those one pound a month adverts? One pound a week adverts for Dave? Every second, there's a Dave. <laughs> He's trying to get over his hangover. Yeah. But this incessant clicking yeah. is not helping. Every time you click, there's a Dave drinking a Carlin against his own will somewhere. <laughs> oh. so. maybe, that's the, maybe that's the trick. <laughs> what? Just have a kind of calling right now. Just to show. Sure. <laughs> Air of the dog and all that. One. I haven't got one, and I don't want it one ever again. He, uh, Jimbo, he hasn't got one. <laughs> <laughs> he started to meditate for it at work now. Now he's remembered how, how much he likes it. <laughs> That's what he's doing right now. He's classing it <laughs> meditation at work. I did my meditating the other week, and on Friday I got a ten pound voucher. Spent it the best way possible. I bought a four pack of Vocation uh, roll with it because it was for seven pound on club card, and then I bought a meal deal as well for three pound. <laughs> so meal deal Whoa. and bit cost me sixty p. Did you Whoa. get a uh, so it was sandwich snack drink? Was it did you get a pork yeah. pie? Oh, you just told him <laughs> for his drink. <laughs> <laughs> right, here's your next... talking meal deal, aren't you? Sandwich, crisps, pork pie, six pack. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going home in a minute. <laughs> right, here's your next question. What question are we on? I thought it was. Is this number three? <laughs> three. Which Premier League two football questions for you now? Which Premier League football club has been offering one pound beer and wine if purchased latest before two pm an hour before kickoff? It's either Everton, Fulham, or Ipswich. I think they've done this twice now, and the last time was at the weekend. So, which club has been doing that? If you're clever enough, you might work out who kicked off at uh, three o'clock this weekend. But I mean, I can't remember that. I'm not that stupid. Yeah. I'm going to say Everton because they need as much money as they can get, I think. Yeah. But maybe it's maybe it's a maybe it's like a central London thing. So Fulham could be the one. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Fulham. I'm gonna go with Fulham. Fulham. I'm gonna go Ipswich. Okay, so Andy going Fulham were the ones that were giving this uh, one pound beer or wine away if you purchase it. It's a bit of a way to entice people into the stadium a bit earlier and spend the money there. Um, but you had to do it an hour before kickoff, before two o'clock, um, if they were kicking off at three. The second time this club's done it, Dave's gone for Ipswich. Has anybody got the right answer? Somebody's got it right. And it's Andy. Well done. I think I don't know if I'm right or what, but did, I think did Fulham play less? Have they played Leicester already? 
because I think Leicester might have been one of the games they first did it they for. They played West Ham at the weekend. They played West, it was West Ham at the weekend, but the first game they did it may have been Leicester, <laughs> maybe. I'm not 100% sure, but anyway, no. there we go. So your second football question is this one. The Three Bees Brewery are this week releasing a beer celebrating the 30th anniversary of which club winning the Premier League? Buzz in, if you know. The Three Bees Brewery this week releasing a beer celebrating the 30th anniversary of which club winning the Premier League? It's Andy. Blackburn Rovers. Blackburn Rovers is... It's correct. Well done, yes. Good football knowledge there. Yeah, 30 years ago. Uh, that that might be more your Alan Shearer um, fanboy stuff, I'm guessing. <laughs> Is that right, Andy? Correct. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so it's the, this, this beer by the three Bs is called Uncle Jack's Best Bitter. Jack's, is Jack like named after the... Was it maybe... Yeah, because they've got the stand named after him and stuff, haven't they, and, and all that kind of thing. What he did part. was he went, sod it, let's put the money in and see if we can win the bloody thing. Did yeah. Did. Yeah, that's it. Um, I think there were another club who, who managed to win Premier League as underdogs as well a few years later, and but I can't remember who that yeah, was. Yeah, they, they were a bit weird, weren't they? Yeah. Clever <laughs> <laughs> <Right. laughs> <laughs> 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 Road. <laughs> so, um, right, we'll, uh, we'll. Have we got anything? Anything? And have you got any more soapboxes or anything this week? Anything you want to no, move no, about? This week. I'm, I'm no. calm down now after last week's. I, I'm glad to see that at least the people I know who wanted tickets managed to get them in the end through the <laughs> new dates release. I'm sure there would have been people who missed out, but I saw that the people who I know who wanted them, a um, couple of people in our community as well. Um, managed to get the tickets for Oasis. So well done to those. Congrats and all that. Um, yeah, pleased for them. We've got cancellation insurance. Yeah, that's it. We'll be falling out before then. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, here we go. I got a pub shed in my garden and a bottle shop in my town. I love the craft and perfect draft and a two-for-one discount. So when it comes to beer, I need a deal that keep the prices that are steel. So I'm calling up Martin Brewers. Not loads and loads and loads going on. Um, but there will be things out there, and we do keep most people up to date. You know, we keep you up to date on Alien Radio because it's quite instant there, and deals can come and go. Uh, one I did spot um, this one; uh, it's still there. I checked it as of the time of recording. Uh, Monday, of course. This is the 16th of September. But Beak are doing a bit of an offer on. So if you want to try some Beak beer, um, they're doing they tend their show do showcases. A, they tend to do a Sunday Monday pack deal, like if they're especially for releasing new beers, like a mixture. You can always opt for the mystery box, which gives you a discount, but you don't know what beer you're going to get. So. Mm. Yeah, well, they, they, you got some good beers in those mystery in yeah. those mystery boxes, yeah. didn't you? So, yeah. um, but yeah, this Ian, Ian the competition winner was happy with his beers as well. So, very yeah. good. Um, so, if anyone wants to try Beak, though, they've got this ongoing at the minute. It's still there. It's been there about a week now. Uh, Five percent off their six packs. It's their showcase pack, so you get a couple of different, a, a good mixture of their stuff. And then ten percent off the twelve packs as well, so something worth looking out for. Um, another one, and again, all these are available on alienradio.co.uk. Go to the offers page. We've got breweries and people submitting their offers on there as well now. Um, but this one's on there: West Side Glory, a seven percent West Coast IPA, uh, twelve four forty mil cans from Formbridge. Uh, they're down from I can't see fifty-five, 55. to thirty-five. Yeah, fifty-five to thirty-five, but. Just double check, um, because I think these, I don't know if they still are, but they were maybe in Asda, I think these. Um, so you want to check that the, the four for three deals and all that kind of thing don't are maybe better. Um, and also you might save yourself a bit of money on delivery, but if you know someone in beer club, give them a nudge, get them to order these for you if you want them. But if anyone anyone who likes a good West Coast, and it's a big West Coast as well, 7% one, um, 
yeah, got on to these. I've not tried this one myself yet, but I do know it was in uh, it was in Asda. I don't know if it still is, um, but definitely worth looking at. Um, so that's that one. Uh, is advent it... calendars, email. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I think that was all of them anyway. So we can talk about yeah. advent calendars. There's, there's... Delete, delete. <laughs> <laughs> too early. Delete. Yeah. I, I think Formbridge actually have got theirs. I think they're doing some sort of like recyclable advent calendar as well. You know, everyone's about uh, sustainability and stuff these days. So, um, yeah, you get another 24 beers for free. That'd be pretty sustainable, wouldn't it? <laughs> but, but like you were saying, out there. like Drink you were saying, and then you get 24 free. In January, that's it. Fun, it? Well, as you were saying last week, though, about uh, you know building your own DIY advent calendars. Now it is September, but if you're doing the DIY stuff, now is the time to start because obviously, you know, keep an eye on the deals. Get you know, grab them cheap, grab them at good prices individually or whatever when they when they're available. Or no, start. I'm just, doing... I'm just getting twelve massive bangers. You're so just gonna, gonna yeah. Yeah. But for anyone who wants to do the 24, because I did this a few years ago, I, I started buying them quite early and then putting them aside. Um, I did like a Sheffield box for myself. Um, but yeah, like you want to you want to start doing that now, really, because I mean, how many weeks will it be? It'll probably not be not as long as we think. There'll be some there'll be some dirty Halloween beers out soon. <laughs> there'll be, be the Christmas Christmas cracker brigade. The Brit. Yep. Brew York, Brew Yorks are on the horizon, aren't they? The Barrel Age Brigade, I mean, usually yeah. potent. Um, yeah, you've got, like I said, the the Halloween stuff. So uh, Riverton usually get their beers out. Um, Neon Raps usually do a raft of Halloween tart beers, don't they? They won't be far off coming out the off the canning lines. I mean. You do get a bit disappointed. This September's a bit. It's a bit like the January into of 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 winter. You know, this is this is like the September's like yeah, the January of summer. Yeah, calling them, it's them it, yeah. <laughs> like it is a bit rubbish. Just you know, because it seems everything seems to you know, it's summer's ended and all that. But one good thing to think is you get some. You know, it's it's a good time of year for the themed beers starting to come in. Oktoberfest, obviously, that's like now pretty I'm much. Winter. I'm, I'm yeah, I'm well behind on that. So is that officially start this weekend, Oktoberfest? Starts this weekend, yeah. Ah, see, I'm behind. I need to get planning for that. So go look in for your, your Oktoberfest beers. There will be. The, Bel the Belgian Beer Company in Stoke, mm. they'll deliver nationwide are some of the best sources of German beers, especially this time of year. I mean, I always say it, but they they probably got like a lot of them sold out now, but you probably can buy a single still as a box. They usually do like a big... I bought it last year. It was like 40 quid, but you got like four of each of five of the main breweries. Um, Augustina, uh, Paul Arne, uh, Hofbrau, Lowenbrau. Who was the other one? I can't remember the other one. <coughs> but there was, I'm sure there were six in there. But yeah, you got four of them. Yeah, Spartan, but might have been Spartan. I can't remember, quite remember. Um, but yeah, you got a fridge. You got a fridge full of great beer. I've got a hat somewhere. I've got a fish him out. Got to get my bunting back up. Yeah, you, you, oh, Dave, you need to get your bunting up. You normally got yours up by now. Yeah, to be fair, I completely forgot about October festival for one or two. Um, but yeah, that all come round. Also, obviously, I just on the Martin Brewers part of October fest. Lidl normally do like a box of yeah. German style beers, which are normally fairly cheapish. Compared to the 25 quid for like 11 beers, aren't they? Something that's silly. It, so in, keep your eye on that because that'll be back again soon. Yeah, and in the last sort of few months as well, because I picked it up for the Euros, they were doing like a fest beer mini keg as well for like ridiculous. I think it must have been about 12 quid. And Coffee you know what? Like, they sell pretzels as well. So yeah, it, it were all right. It were fine. It were decent, you know, for especially when you got people around. And they would do it. I don't know if they've still got them, but because I know Spenno um, kind of, you know, promoted it and stuff on his channel. But they were selling like uh, the, the the bottles with with the actual steins as well. So if you want to get yourself some steins in stock for Oktoberfest, head to Lidl. You'll probably be able to get them quite a good price there with with a beer. So talking of yeah. steins, and I know I messaged Andy about this on Friday, but I know it was probably, yeah. probably slightly bit drunk and stuff. Um. So it's been the dance or verdant, or whichever you, the way you want to pronounce it, it's 10th birthday this year. And they brought out four birthday beers, which I've got all four. 
And then they brought out a special Stein. <laughs> now, I'm a sucker for glassware, but now this isn't glass. It's a pottery one. It's a oh, pottery it? Stein, right? I've, and I've got a lot. Sam bought, Sam bought a lovely pottery Stein from Farm Trip that I've got in the, in the kitchen. I'm showing oh, you a picture of it. That's but nice. For the viewers, it's a style which is half painted in what Tiffany blue, let's say, and then the other one's playing with Edge the dance. Gel. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Only available at the tap room in Falmouth. From it's forty pounds for one, and it's one per customer, and it's available on Saturday from well, Saturday. Time, you, time you're setting off, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> now, I wouldn't try pinching that one. I am actually going to Cornwall on Friday. <laughs> and on Saturday, we had planned to go to Falmouth because Verdant or Verdant are putting on, or there is some form of beer tap takeover, beer festival. There's a mini beer festival, Dave, in Falmouth this weekend that travels Correct. the length and breadth of Falmouth through about seven different pubs with all different likes of beer festival based breweries on and it looks so, phenomenal Brill. so on saturday we are going to falmouth and then on the way back home from falmouth to st ives we are going to the tap room for a beer because my brother's never been now i am in this awkward thing of do i get one it's 40 quid for a star he messaged me is this jug worth 40 quid <laughs> i was like hey Jugs are in the eye of the beholder. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am contemplating on buying one. And I don't know what to do because I'm Keep still thinking it, 40 quid steep. But then you're, nobody, you're never going to get a chance to buy one again. So Going back to sponsor a Dave. Um, <laughs> we'll have to get the advert knocked up soonish, won't we? <laughs> if 40 yeah, people want to a quid in. Yeah, it's got me two pound to click now. But Dunny, if you want me to pick you one up, I'm more than, I can do that. There's four of us going. It's one per customer. <laughs> there we go. So, um, you're about Sam, it. Sam, Sam's got a lovely one from Farmyard. Uh, they did yeah. a range of like a lady did like handcrafty ones. So it's got it's like grey and blue with the Farmyard logo on. It's proper. It's like a tankard type. But because I've got the, I've, one. because I've got the four birthday beers, I think if I had that as well, obviously it's f completed the set, then isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> we do uh, need to think. We do need to think about Oktoberfest, though. Um, are, when are we going to do our Oktoberfest? What? What are we? Are you both here next week? Are we, we going to get an Oktoberfest beer in? Yeah. Dave's just blown his head off. Are you here next, next week? week? Oh, oh, we'll do it week yeah. after. We'll do it week after. It's, it's locked on. Yeah. yeah, we'll do it. In it. We'll do it week after. So we'll we'll plan Oktoberfest because we can't miss it. We got and I'll get some. Even I'll get some bunting this time. I kept missing it. Um, just back onto the rest of Martin. Oh, there's only a bit more. But just to say, just a reminder: go check out Alien Radios. .co.uk's offers and discounts page. We're refreshing them all the time. Obviously, we record the offers and put them on the station as well. So listen to that, and you'll be able to hear what the offers are. And then obviously you can find them on the website, link straight through to the um, offers and uh, breweries and that can put their own offers on there as well. So there we go. Okay, time for this fella. Hello everyone, I'm the Compare Without Compare. And here at the Ale and Audio Pub Shed tonight, I'd like to introduce Atten Shady Mercury. <laughs> So, Shady Mercury is back. Uh, you successfully got it last week. It was kind of topical last week because it was uh, it was Earth, Wind and Fire, Earth, Wind and Pablo. It was uh, September, wasn't it? This week, it's kind of, you know, we haven't we got themes at the minute because we're not doing the courtroom at the minute, although it will return soon. Um, Courtroom's closed for refurbishment. It is, yeah. Big refurbishments going on. Um, but in his wig. <laughs> but it's a little bit topical this time as well, if that helps, okay? So think nope. about things that have been in the news going on and all that kind of thing. 
What is Shedi Mercury singing this time? Have a listen to this. <laughs> oh, you look both look perplexed by that one. <laughs> Because it was fucking nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's have another go. Yeah, what is he singing? There we go, that was Shady Mercury, the pub shed turn. Uh, what was he singing? Guessing you haven't got a clue no still. Idea. <laughs> I, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna try. Right, I had a new phone. I had it, Pixel yeah. Nine. Pixel Nine, mm-hmm. lovely little phone. Um, comes with Gemini AI. Yeah. And I was thinking last week, would Gemini know what Pablo Shelly Mercury true. was singing if I, if you played it and I recorded it and see if he actually picked it up what it was? And yeah. Because I've got a clue what it is. Should we try? Yeah. Right. Here we go. So, because there's a there is before you start, there is a Google Hum thing, isn't there? You can hum into the Google app. Know. Yeah. You know, so if you, have, you know if you've got ever song got a song in your head and you don't know what it is, you can hum into the Google app, and it will help you. It'll kind of give you a match percentage as to what it thinks wow. it is. But yeah, let's let's give this Gemini right. a go. Right, yeah, here we go. Right. One, two, three. Not happening. No, it's not picking it up. Oh, it's never mind. Never mind. Oh. Well, people can try it as a listening back, maybe. Turn the volume up and all that. Um, but yeah. What uh... is Pablo singling? <laughs> it says, it said. Nonsense. Hasn't got, what, hasn't got a clue what Pablo's singing, unfortunately. Even AI don't know. Anyway, we'll roll it over. Listeners, get in touch. Let us know what you think he was singing. It was a little bit topical, okay? So, it's time to bring back a game. We, brought, we, we did it a few weeks ago. I think it was quite popular. And I think it's fun to do it again. It's time for Blankety Blank. Blankety Blank. Blankety Blank. Blankety blank. Lily Cabbage presenting uh, Blankety Blank. So the way it's going to work this time, you can see my screen, can't you? Yep. Great. Yep. Okay. So the way it's going to work this time then is we've got a selection of beers. And you need to fill in the blanks with beer names, breweries, and locations. So each one will have each line. There's 10 all together. There's the beer name, there's the brewery, and there's the location. You've got to kind of fill in all the blanks. Now, um, the beers are each of the breweries' most popular tap, uh, beers on untapped. By most popular, we mean the one, the beer of theirs that has had the most check-ins, okay? I know we had a big chat about Untapped last week. This is kind of quite good, but in a sense, because it's about more how often they've been checked in. So it's yeah. it's quite a good way to sort of see, you know, each brewery and what. And, and obviously, in some cases, it'll be the most checked-in beer because it's the beer that's maybe been around the longest as well. So maybe not necessarily the best, but the one that's been checked in the most or is most widely available. So here we go, then. Here are your selection of beers, and we'll work down the list from number 10. Yeah which is Blank by Pretty Decent Beer Co., who are based in London. 
Waltham Forest. What do we think that beer is, that first one? So we get a beer cheaper than this in Tesco. Okay. Are you happy to go with that as well, Dave? Yeah. I'm going with that. Let's take a look. So, Blank by Pretty Decent Beer Co. who are in London, in Waltham Forest. The beer is... Correct. There you go. Could get a better beer at, or could get better at Tesco for a quid. Have you had that one yet? I know you've got it. Have you, have you I've drank got it? In the, I've got it in the fridge, yeah. Ah, I'm ready to drink. Yeah. There we go. Um, so that's the first one. You got that one right. The next one's a bit more tricky. It's Blank by Left Handed Giant, who are based in Blank. So maybe you want to start with the location first. Bristol. Bristol. Yep. There we go. Fairly easy one. Um, but what do you think is their most popular beer? Is it Cheeseburger Cavalry? Cheeseburger Cavalry. Do you want to choose one, Dave? Can you think of one off the top of your head? No. <laughs> <laughs> Carlin. To be fair, I, my memory's like that. I've had a fair few, like Carlin, I've had a fair few left-handed giant It'll beers. Be, Not for a while, actually. But, is, it, um, is it Tiger Dream as well? I can't remember what it was. Yeah, there's House. Dream There's Dream House, isn't there, which is a, a popular... I remember having that one. That's nice. Uh, it's you not... It's not picking on the first spot, Joyce. Yeah, it's not. It's Woodland Creatures. No. I don't, I don't think I have either. It's their most checked in one. The next one might be a bit easy then. Number eight is Virtuous by Blank, who are based in Leeds. Any ideas? This is a supermarket available beer. Virtuous Blank in Leeds. No. Oh. Give you a little clue. Um, you know when you were talking about beer festivals last week, Andy, and what uh, the what the farm trip people said, or what the other breweries said. You know what their other beer festivals that were up there with that one is in as good as the, the the farm trip one. They mentioned one that one of these breweries is heavily involved in as being one of the really good ones. And it actually only took place. I think it was maybe. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you remember the name of the brewery? No, I bloody can't. <laughs> they recently saved another yeah. brewery. I know it's Kirkstall. Yay, Kirkstall. There I you go. I could, see, I could see the logo, but I was like, what's the bloody name? <laughs> the, the very, is it, they, they, they look a bit, is it Thornbridge they always remind me of a little bit? They look yeah. similar to another brewery anyway. It's sort of like the designs and stuff, don't they? Um, but yeah. Um, next then. Okay. So number seven is blank blank. So the beers, we don't know what the beer is. We don't know what the brewery is, but we know they are in carefully in Wales. Caffilly. Caffilly. Carefully. Carefully. Carefully in Caffilly. Carefully <laughs> placed in Wales. Bubble do you, wrapped. Do you know of any, any breweries that way? It's just trickier than the last time we did this game, isn't it? Yeah, because I don't know where Carefilly is. is. <laughs> so can you name a brewery in Wales? Where's Matt? Polly's? That's, Polly's is Wales. That's no, Mould. Who had who just opened, they've, they've announced they're opening the tap room, aren't they? I mean, in, yeah, uh, yeah. I asked them, I nagged them when I was, I've been past a few times, have you opened the tap room yet? Um <laughs> Not sure. My my Welsh geography is letting me down here, and my half Welshness is kicking me from the inside. <laughs> um, so you got Should we give you the brewery? I'm just like, I'm, in my head, I'm like, where's Caffilly Castle? Like, I'm, in, that's what I'm in my head. Yeah. Where where is it in Wales? And they might give me a hint, but I'm struggling. We'll give you the brewery then. It's Dark Element Brew Co. I wouldn't have known. No, I know that I Kev know. Kev's had him quite a lot, so I'm guessing you're not going to guess no. the beer. No, no, not with this no. one. It is a tough I've one. Not, I've one. not had any Dark Elements. Well, the beer that you were looking for, Kev might have known it. Is Headlights. I'm pretty sure I've seen uh, Kev have that one before. Uh, so as Kev I, <laughs> as he does drink phantom brewing beers quite a lot as well actually kev he's had a couple of yeah. friday fours with them and they're the next one he, so, he definitely's got to know this i so, know where they're from 
Where are they from then, Dave? Phantom Bruco. Uh, the Reddin, aren't they? Correct, yeah, yes. Indeed. And but what's their... This is yeah. going to be a tough one because they bring out so many beers, but I am going to say feeling this. You're going to say feeling this, uh, which, of course, is a beer that you like because... Steam Bible 182. Let's have a look. Yes, mm. well done, Dave. <laughs> Correct. So, are they the two guys that you met at Rivington? Yeah, Dale and I forgot the other guy, uh, Dane and the other guy. I can't remember his name, unfortunately. But are they the brewers or the guys that run it? No, what Dane was works in sales, and um, oh, the other right. guy was one of the the other guy was one of the brewers. Funny. Yeah, so, I like them. Top, top top blokes. Number five then is blank. So the beer is blank. The brewery is blank, but we know the brewery based in Liverpool. So, which brewery is he going to? Think about choosing from in Liverpool. Only a few. I thought Asvex would manage. Asvex. Asvex Liverpool. Happy to settle on that, or do you want to think of another one? No, go with that. Sorry, Dave. Maybe I think go. you've cut off. It might be, it could be me. You going with Asvex? Let's have yeah. a look. Yeah, it is Asvex. Well done. But that's the tricky thing now because Asvex bring out a lot of beers too, and they've done a lot Man, of really good I ones, did. particularly I over the last. Well. Uh, Mana, Mana. What was that? Is that the most popularly checked in one though? I remember, not the most top rated. Which is the biggest? Che- which has oh. been checked in the most? Oh, you know, uh, to think about it. Mana's they've done different flavors of Mana. Mm. Yeah, no. Tre- tree frog. Tree frog. Happy with that, Dave? Or can you think of any more? No, go with that because you've clearly gave us the hint that it's not Mana. <laughs> it's not, not tree frog either. either. It's not tree frog either. Um, it, and it's not one that I had the other night. Yesterday, actually, I had oh, this it Sun- you've got it. Sunday beer, electronic butterfly. This was number two of their most popularly checked in beers. Electronic butterfly, a pale ale. Um, no, it's not that either. It's Seagull King. Oh bloody hell! <laughs> bloody Seagull! <laughs> I knew that. Seagull King. Next one, then number four. We're getting close to the end now. So blank. Uh, this this is confused the shit out of me as soon as I saw it because they're all named after star constellations or some sort of ah. what's it? Astrology now. So if for the a li- subject that's out of my ballpark. It's it's astronomy. <laughs> it's astronomy, yeah. <laughs> so oh, number four. For the listeners, know. it's it's Blank by Gravity Well, who are obviously based in London. Uh, I know you've had a few Gravity Well beers, haven't you, Andy? Yeah. We did a live for Gravity Well once, didn't we? Yeah. So... Thanks to the Hoppy Poet who pointed us in their direction. Yeah, and I, I couldn't name you a single beer from Gravity Well. Begins with a C. Cosmos. <laughs> Cosmic. Constellation. <laughs> Good guesses. You might not get there. You may have had it, though. It's Galaxies Apart. Oh, we did that. Galaxies oh, Apart. Uh, Is that one? Did you have did that one? one? Yeah. Yeah. That. yeah. Um, so number, th- number three, then, is blank. Uh, so we Blue don't know the beer name. Full Circle. And where is Full Circle? Looper. So you think the beer is Looper? Let's have a look. Correct. Well done. And he's from from Newcastle. And again, you're correct. Well done. Yes. Okay, number two then is a beer called Octopod by Blank. And it's in Manchester. There's a few to choose from in Manchester. But I'll give you a clue. It's not one that gets. It's probably one that gets forgotten about amongst the some they, of the. They died and came back from the dead. I don't think it's them ones either. But tell who, who you're going to say. Um. Is it them? Might not be them. And the you... names completely escaped me. Begins with a is... W. Oh, was you going to say? I thought you so saw. I was thought you was going to say a, was it A B C or something no, like no, that. No, no, no. They, they alphabet died, or... they came back. Yeah, yeah. No, it's not. It's yeah. It's not alphabet. But you might be right then in the one that you're thinking. Oh, what 
the fucking name. <laughs> Octopi. I can, I, can see the logo. I can see the logo. It's like it looks like the pyramid stage. Um, I think you might be right. People, people are screaming it. <laughs> and I'm frantically looking for a can in the in the <laughs> a can somewhere. So Octopod in Manchester. Octopod's the beer. Manchester's the area. Shall I give it? Yeah. Shall I show you? Yeah, give it. Let me know. Well, it's wonder, wonder beyond. beyond. Oh, wonder God. beyond. Yeah, they went, they, went, they went flat. Bump. Nothing. Somebody bought them back. From the yeah. And then the last one, one then, it's number one, it's a beer from Glasgow. It's a brewery and beer from Glasgow. It's not tenants. <laughs> what are we thinking? Do you think of any uh, breweries in Glasgow? I know there'll be somebody screaming at you right now. It's going to be overtone. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. I'm trying, think, I'm trying to think what the pissing most checked in beer is. Yeah, it's it's difficult with a lot of these because they bring out so many beers, don't they? Like, yeah, but they have one. They have a two. They have three or four beers that are on mm. rotation, don't they? Yeah. Exploding something. <laughs> Exploding, <laughs> Exploding cities is one that's usually around, isn't it? Um, it's a more shorter. It's a shorter name. Yeah, this it's one, a short name. Just a very short, quick one. Pablo. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's he's the person who's checked it in the most. <laughs> oh right. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Here we go. Oof. I'll reveal Oof. it. Oof. It's Ouija. Ouija, oh, Ouija, a Ouija board, Ouija by overtone in Glasgow. There you go. That was that was a tough one. That really was yeah, tough. Was one. Um, but yeah, that was blankety blank. With Lily Cabbage. What's in Jan's box? What's in Jan Box's box? What's in Jan's box? What's in Jan Box's box? What's in Jan's box? What's in Jan Box's box? What's in Jan's box? What's in Jan's box? What's in Jan's box? Hi guys, Jan here from the box. Everybody's in Jan's box. Along my famous box. Can you guess what's inside it this week? 20 questions and I can only answer yes or no. Jan's box is back. Guess who's back with a brand new box? So, 20 questions to guess what's in Jan's box. It's going to be something that's usually inside or around your pub sheds. It could be something gardeny, pub sheddy generally. Um, but yeah, ask away. Start your questioning. Go on, Donna. Is he made of wood? No. Um, no. Oh. Is it made of plastic? Um. Yes. Oh, hello. Well, well. Does it make a noise? Um. Um, no. Plastic doesn't make a noise. Does it have a light on it? Yes. Can do. Can do. Not always, but can do. That's a nice pen you've got there, Jimbo. It's a shiny pen, yeah. Oh, look at that. Yeah, oh. Matching pens. Matching pens. Oh, they are lovely pens. <laughs> Show me your pen. Mine says camera on it. <laughs> <laughs> Is it used in the serving of drinks? Um, no. That's five questions. Not used in serving drinks. It's plastic. It may or may not have a light on it, depending. Uh... 
<laughs> not using the serving of drinks. May or may have not liked. Practically, it doesn't make a noise. Oh my god, I don't even know what to ask. Does it sit on when I say this? Because I'm going to say top, that's the top, and obviously yeah. that the back, but does that's it sit the on top. The top of the bar? Um, um, no, no. Isn't your surgery, Dave? That was what I was thinking. Uh, is this for outside? Yes. Can be both. It can be both. It can be both. Oh, if you need it later on, I might give you an extra clue on that one. Oh, hello. So remind me about that question. I'm not going to give it you yet, but remind me about that yeah, question. Yeah, well. <laughs> give us a clue on that. Not yet. How <laughs> about now? No. Can we have it now? <laughs> it's not working with yeah, kids. But, yeah, but what about now? Are we nearly there yet? <laughs> Starting again from now. <laughs> 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 Has could have a light on it, but it could use outside. Yeah, could be. Yeah, could be outside. Could be inside. Plastic, but it's plastic. It's not used for serving the drinks. Mm. Is it? Oh, it's got a light. Would be. Is it mains powered? Yes. Very much so. Very much so. Very much so. Very much so. Does it give up any sort of heat? Um, no. Oh, fuck. <laughs> You're on nine. Have we got that clue yet? No. No. Do me and Andy have one, to your knowledge? In, in this? Yes! I'm pretty sure you'll have to have one, probably. In some way. That's ten. We have to have one. It doesn't make any I'm, look, I'm looking at my pub at bar. And there's some it doesn't, make any, it doesn't make any noises. It's mains powered. It could have a light on it. might not have. It's made of plastic. And we ha pretty much have to have one. And you're on ten. Rain's powered. <laughs> I'm thinking what have I got fucking plugged in? I can't decide if I like taking part more or knowing what the answer is and seeing you two struggle to get it right. I think I like this more. <laughs> but it doesn't make any noise. Nah. It, it, yeah, it doesn't like anything. If you touch it or use it, it's going to make a noise naturally. But it's not. It doesn't make a. It doesn't like a speaker. It doesn't make. Yeah, a it's noise. not going to chime or anything like that. No. Yeah. <sighs> I'll give you your extra clue in, in five more questions time. If you're, oh, still struggling so at, if you're still struggling at 15. Is it used for decoration? 
Um, no. No. The thing itself isn't used for decoration. But the light is. No. It may play its part in decoration, but not it, it itself is not decorative. What? <laughs> is it That's a drill? Weird. It's... Is it fuck you, idiot? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dan. <laughs> is it is it a is it some form of tool? Uh, you're a fucking no, tool. it's fucking not. <laughs> you're a fucking tool, you fucking slag. <laughs> you say not not really, no, no. We're we're, right. we're, we're bored look, we're bordering slightly and edging into sort of DIY ish there, but not it's not a tool. But it's got a you're light on, on. You're on 13. Decoration. It could have a light on it. Main's power, isn't it? It's in the use of decorating. Not 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 yeah, not not just for decorating, but it could be involved in. Well you've got to have one. Does it live in the pub shed? Uh well, Andy kind of asked that earlier, so I'll 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 not bother. No, Dave said that we got one. I didn't say does it live in the shed. Okay. Um, it can live, it doesn't have to live in the shed, it can live wherever it is. It has to be wherever it's put. <laughs> I'm still going to let you off for that one. Oh, can you give then. us the clue? You've got two more questions before you get your extra clue. It, are you writing on the back of your box is there? I have a bit of paper what? on it. I have a bit of what? paper on it. What? That's worth an extra guess, at least, if he's been writing on that back of that. Yeah, it's a bit, a bit of paper here. What are you using the clipboard, Dave? <laughs> the bloody clipboard. Is it a Wi-Fi adapter? <laughs> no, you daft cunt. <laughs> Fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the right move to today. One. We've got to have one. That's what I was thinking. It has a light on. It's plastic. It's not actually a bad guess, though. It has to be powered unless it's POE. Um... You're on 14. One more, and you can have your extra clue. Wi-Fi adapter was a good guess. Uh, is it a fuse box? Um, no. Oh. Does it have Does buttons it? on it? Wait, we're allowed a qu clue. No, yeah, I'm just going to have buttons. Yes! Right, now what? give us a clue, you chump. Okay, so let's just establish it has got buttons you've worked out. Okay, um, it's plastic. It's um, you likely to have one. You pretty much got to have one. It can be outside or inside your pub shed, depending on where it is outside or inside. It might be a slightly different version of it. Oh, that's that's your clue. Um, there may be a light on it. Not always. There might be a light on it. Mains powered. You're on sixteen. Stop yeah, mains, mains powered. Definitely mains powered. Hundred percent mains powered. <laughs> well, I don't. I mustn't have one. <laughs> Is it a plug socket? What was that, Dave? Is it a plug socket? What's in Jan Box? What's in Jan Box? What's in Jan Box?
this time in Jan Box's box, it was a plug socket. There you go. Yes, a plug socket. Oh, fuck off, Jan. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly got you. Nearly got you. Because they have, like, you know, about the decoration thing, yeah, yeah you might plug something into it that's decorative. 95% metal should have lasted. Well, yeah, I suppose you can't see the metal, though, can you? Behind it is. Yeah, if they are, oh. they made of metal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Might be a VAR needed on that one. Probably not the best. Yeah. Um, you daft cunt. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Right. Um, on to this then. Well done, though. Thanks, Jan. Uh, on to this. It's time for Pub Shed, Home Bar of the Week, which this Home week. Bar of the week. Yeah. Um, I got in touch with them quite early, actually, because uh, it was the Cleveland Arms who pointed them out and they were liking posts and stories and so on. So I thought, well, I've got their attention. I'll uh, see if they want to be featured on Home Bar of the Week. Bless them. They said, oh, we'd love to be, but we can't pay or anything like that. Um, I said, oh, no, Why no. Not? <laughs> no, I think they thought, it, you know, it could have been some sort of like, I'll promote you and then, then, yeah, promote you for followers and all that kind of thing. But no, no, not at all. Uh, so yeah, this you, is you are one. You are one of them. Don't let them. Don't let anybody say otherwise. <laughs> this is the landlocked pirate bar. Um, they are in Denver, Colorado, Colorado. Um, they have another... access to some of the best beer in America in Denver, Colorado. Mm. And uh, yeah, and we've, we've featured quite a lot of American bars recently. I think we've kind of had a bit, gone a bit quieter on the UK front again. It tends to happen like that. It comes in waves, doesn't it? Um, gone a little bit quieter again. Um, but there's plenty of American ones out there and plenty on the list to work through. Um, so yeah, give them a follow. It's the Landlocked Pirate Bar. Now, I did get some information from him uh, asking the usual sort of questions. Why is it called the Landlocked Pirates? Um, because of the location and theme being in Denver, Colorado, the bar is located 740 miles or 1,666 kilometers to the nearest ocean. And while being a tiki bar, they didn't want to appropriate the Polynesian culture. So uh, they figured where there is rum, there's pirates and started building the bar last July in uh, the garage and worked on it over the winter. They cut the wood, sanded, painted, ran lighting, got the base ready. Uh, the walnut bar top uh, was hand-finished with pure tongue oil um, over a period of two more uh, of two more months, uh, or two of, over quite a lot of months, it sounded right, so they had to kind of do the coating and stuff over a couple of months as well. And then they had their first event uh, as of the 26th of May, just gone, or this year. Uh, they've held five events with a custom cocktail menu and food. Uh, they've built the home bar because uh, they love to entertain guests and they're passionate about tiki culture and the 1950s uh, dinner and cocktail parties. And one of their favourite events held this year was a brunch, uh, mimosas and croquet game. Uh, the owners of the bar are Rob and Tina. I have got a picture of Rob and Tina. Let me get that picture of Rob and Tina up for you so you can see them. Oh, I can't move it. What's happening here? There we go. Rob and Tina. There they are. Uh, Tina dressed like a pirate there, and uh, there's most, I'm assuming it's Rob anyway, uh, drinking out of his uh, like sort of tiki. Well, I think it's like I don't know what is that. It's like a it looks like a genie, doesn't it? Like drinking out of a genie's head, something like that. Anyway, um, but yeah, so it's Rob and Tina. They've lived in Denver for 19 years. Their favorite feature is their logo, which was born from a dream and a simple sketch on cardboard. Uh, it's now a bright and vibrant logo adoring the front of their bar. And now they've got a full-size custom pirate flag, which is on their fi- on their Instagram. If you have a look for it, they've got a full-size pirate flag uh, out front to let the friends and neighbours know that the bar's open. They've got four bar pets, three cats and one dog. The cats are Vinnie, Jake and Great. And they've got Minnie Morty. And their dog is the first mate of the ship, Crackerjack. That's a great name for a dog, Crackerjack. Um... One of their regulars uh, to give a shout out to, or some of their regulars to give a shout out to, are Felice, Jeff, Glenn, and Ashley. And uh, yeah, in terms of what they've got to do or what they're going to be working on, they're going to be framing the back porch area. Uh, it's going to be their spring project, along with growing their growing our decor will be a project. So I'm guessing that's like they're going to have like the sort of like you know plants and that kind of thing. So they're going to be growing that, and they've got vast dreams for the bar. Uh, but they've got to work on those projects as they are, as and when they're financially able to do them. So there we go. That is the landlocked um, pirate. 
and we can see some pictures awesome. on the screen of it. I love the, the logo. It's really cool. Um, doing a good job with that. Uh, yeah, they've got these some nice tiki glasses, and they cl- clearly enjoy their uh, spirits and all that kind of thing as well. And you can see a little leaflet on our screen of, of what looks like it was their probably their croquet night that they held, uh, mimosas and croquet night. There we go. Uh, so, yeah, please do give them a follow. You like that one? Yep, that's cool, that. Like Land- yeah, they're, they're very popular. They, they seem to be growing. I think people just... You know, especially when it gets to the winter, they kind of don't want the they want they want the summer to go. So tiki bars seem popular, and and more and more indoor type tiki bars we're seeing as well, aren't we? Um, that can be used all year round. So yeah, that's the landlocked pirate bar. Uh, go give him a follow. Tell him you heard him on Alien Audio, and of course you'll hear him across the rest of the following week on our twenty four seven radio station, Alien Radio, as well. Just a reminder: if you do have a pub shed at home bar, or if you're just a beer lover. Go check out our interactive map on alienradio.co.uk. There's over 60 different pub sheds, home bars, and beer lovers on there now. And when you look at it as a whole world map, it's quite bonkers, actually, to see how sort of spread apart people are. I know we've got one on there on in Australia. Quite a few now in the States and, you know, uh, in Europe and all that kind of thing. So if you're listening to this and you've not plotted yourself on the map yet, go do it. You don't have to put your actual postcode on. We're not, we, in fact, we're not asking for that at all. We're just kind of wanting the city or the town. We don't we don't want you to actually put your, your streets on there for obvious reasons. But, yeah, uh, do go and put your city or your town on there just so we can see where everyone is. That's really cool. So there we go. So what's plans for the weekend uh, Dave kind of already told us what you're doing, but uh, t- yeah, just remind us you've got a little trip yeah. planned, didn't you? Yeah, go to St. Ives on Friday for the week in Cornwall. Uh, so yeah, and then obviously Saturday we're going to go to Falmouth, go to the beer festival, and go then to Verdun, Verdun, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then in between that, there'll just be pub trips for the rest of the week, St. Ives Brewery. Um, and those kind of bits and bobs. So, yeah, taking your seven wives to St. Ives. <laughs> <laughs> seven wives to St. Ives. But yeah, I, I, what I want to try and find, I don't not know. If he's, gonna, not if he, he's not taking him if he's got to go and buy him seven jugs. <laughs> no, <laughs> Carlin. Um, what I want to try and go and pick up is the 8% version of Rattler. Uh, so basically, I'm just going to go to the cider farm. Is it called Rattler? raffled so yeah i want to try some of that so do like a a good scrumpy cider so get yourself a dig damage on of it dave over the back yeah. of you pour it like that <laughs> <laughs> yeah you yeah so... An apple while you do it. <laughs> so yeah i'll be out and about and uh there'll be pictures and beers along the way Very in fact good. there's a new, there's a new pub well not a newish pub but i didn't we didn't notice it the last time we went to cornwall which was only last year, but there's a, um, and it's near where we're stopping actually. There's a Belgian like styled pub, so it would just do all, all like massive range of Belgian beers and stuff. So nice. hopefully this weekend, then if Oktoberfest is on and starts this weekend, maybe they've got something happening. And so yeah, we're gonna go and visit there as well. So very good. Well, enjoy. Avoid the carlin. Keep off the grass yeah. and all that. Don't you worry, um, I can keep off that. <laughs> so who uh, has a picture of Carlin at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yourself, Andy. I'm taking my mum and dad to Riverton. Thursday oh yeah, Friday. remember this? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we're back. Um, luckily, they've got two beers coming out this week, which are collabs with Finback and Celestial. And it's actually a tap takeover night on the first Thursday night when we get there. So Winning. that's uh, well timed. Um, so that'll be good. Introduce the folks to some crazy beers, I think. Um, not that they've not had them before, but it's been a bit different for them. So. My mum's birthday's next week. So I just used it as a bit of a scapegoat to say. What an amazing birthday, birthday, birthday present. Take, it's your mum's birthday. So you take her somewhere that you enjoy. Exactly. <laughs> birthday's all round. <laughs> Absolute winner. Well, speaking of birthdays, I'm I'm, I'm off to. It's kind of my birthday. My birthday is falling in middle of the week next week, so it's kind of like awkward smack it middle, so you don't know when to celebrate it. But sure, as it happens, yeah, twenty four, twenty four. 
Ah, there we go. Great, great birthday days. Anyway, we're a bit rubbish this year because it's the middle of the week. But um, I'm kind of. Your mum and dad had a really good Christmas one year. Yeah, don't you mind do me. <laughs> yeah, I've worked that out before. I don't think I were planned. Um, <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, they both worked at Alfred's as well. So, in, in actually round back at bike sheds, you couldn't even make it up, honestly. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway, less of that thinking about anyway, that. Anyway, this weekend. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. I've got. Uh, I've got, yeah, I've been, I've been very kindly uh, guest listed for the Craft Brew Festival, the Sheffield Leg, uh, by Cam, of course. Um, yep. And, yeah, I'm looking forward to going there. So it's uh, me, my brother, dad, uh, Wayne the Bottle Shop Man is coming with us. So my local bottle shop guy, Wayne. Uh, from Lardy Dar, he's coming out. He gets a rare little trip out. He's looking. He's getting his wife to lock up the shop and to sit the last few hours. And he's going to come to be a festival with us. It's all you can drink, so that could end badly. Um, so we're off to that. Uh, I've heard you're there's a few. A, you're going to be asleep somewhere. You are. Yeah, probably. Uh, I can tell you who who's going. I know a triple pointer there from the local ones. There's, I don't think there's loads of local ones, um, but triple pointer there. Oh, Thornbridge, obviously. Um, and then we've got, oh, they've just, oh, I've just, I've just seen this. This has just been announced. I've not, not seen it until now. Um, they've got Copper Beach going, uh, Hop, Hop Fen Brewing Company, New Invention Brewery, Freedom. This is a good one for me. Jim Brew, Jim Brew Brewing Company. Never heard of them, but I can, I'm sure I can, uh, yeah, make links with them, obviously. Jim Brew. Get on board with that. Yeah. And then I think this one's, oh, Loon Brew. Uh, and then the others are, who else we got? Triple Point, Siren, uh, Indian Brewing Company, Bianca Indian Road. Brewing, Indian Brewing Company do a pen hock, I think it's called out spelt. So oh, Jay, yeah. who runs, is one of, there's two brothers that run Indian Brewing Company. Pen hock is a really good lager. Really oh, good. I'll give that a try, yeah. I'll, remember to, I'll write that down. Uh, yeah, Bianca Road, Only With Love, and there was one more. Uh, sheep's in sheep in wolf's clothing brewery. I think they're a zero low alcohol brewery, aren't they? I think are the they sheep not? Sheep in wolf's clothing was on when they're done in with uh, the guys at the beer fridge podcast birthday. So uh, I forget his name, but he was on there talking about his beers. And sheep and wolf's clothing makes some really good sounding. I've never had them, but they sound really good. The beers they're not. Um, he does some low ABV, but he does. Some, oh right, okay. Like, Corkers as well, so they look All good. Right. Sound, cool. They sound good. I've never tried them, but yeah. Uh, Bayonet uh, Brewing, a logo I recognise, but I cannot remember what it is. Can you can that that one there, bottom there? Nope. No, nope, don't recognise that one. Thornbridge, obviously, and then Disruption is Brewing. They're there as well. So That's yeah, good it sounds good. Um, so looking forward to that. I'm going to be taking the Alien Radio bits and bobs. Got some leafleting stickers and a, a banner stand i've got an actual banner stand a banner he's stand. got he's bloody, bloody literary never mind leaf, leafleting yeah i'm gonna do a bit of live reporting and all that kind of thing uh well, so that who's, going, who's taking over from you when you've had too many because david <laughs> i'll be sensible no to way. be honest i'll be sensible because <laughs> i want i want to make i want no, to make the curry this time at the end there. Yeah, no, Dave's not there. He won't be able to take it. Like, okay. Our Jack will have to step in, mumbling. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's 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 Friday. Uh, we chose a Friday night because I, I, in the first case, I didn't know whether Wednesday would be home. Turned out they weren't, but my dad can't go on the Saturday anyway. So, oh, the other person we're hoping to meet there is uh, the Vine Pub Shed as well. Uh, I have met him before a while ago, kind of crossed paths, but since actually knowing him properly through Instagram, not, you know, not, not kind of seen him since then in person. So that's looking forward to seeing uh, yeah, the vine. There we go. Uh, so that's, that's me. Then that's cool. time to watch Sheffield Wednesday. Then on the Saturday, if the, is it, are they playing oh, Saturday? What a, Can't remember. What an enjoyable weekend. Hung over in now. Yeah. Well, I won't be in the owl. I'll be, uh, I'll be listening to it on the radio, obviously not watching it. If it's a three o'clock kickoff. <laughs> anyway, so that, that's that. So yeah, there we go. 
So it looks sounds like we've all got good weekends planned. And yeah, we'll do an Oktoberfest special as well in the next few weeks when we're all back together. Um, but yeah, uh, have good weekends, both of you. What what number we're choosing? Six. Number six. Here we go. From the hardy arm, here's Dave. We the shit be a fact. Here's Dave. Did you know Carlin actually tastes really? <laughs> no, just no. Do you know, what? I was never going to say anything about it, but I thought, you know what? It makes good makes good comedy, doesn't it? Really. So, but on on brand on this one, in Canada, beer has three times the economic impact of wine and spirits combined. See you next week. See you See later. later. Bye-bye.